Good morning, students. Uh, I am Dr. Neeraj Gupta. Now today we will start with the steady state errors. Now, as uh, we have discussed earlier, that control system analysis and design focuses on three specifications. That is, the analysis and design of the control system. It focuses on three specifications. That is, the transient response, stability. and the steady state error transient response we have already discussed and that today we will discuss about the steady state error so for analysis and design three specifications are taken into consideration that is transient response stability and steady state error taking into account the robustness of design along with the economic and social considerations that is taken into consideration the robustness of design along with economic and the social considerations economic and social considerations okay now now we examine the steady state error in this case in this chapter we examine the steady state error we define the errors and derive the methods for controlling them and as we progress we find that the control system design entails the trade off between the desired transient response that is it is actually the trade off between the desired transient response desired transient response steady state error steady state error and requirement that the system is stable it means that stay ability so it is a trade off between desired transient response steady state error and the stability now we will start with the definition and the test inputs now first definition and the test inputs now first is the uh, definition of steady state error so what is a steady state error it is actually the difference between the input and the output for a prescribed test input as t tends to infinity so the difference between the output and input that is difference between the output and input for a prescribed test input as t tends to infinite okay now there are different test inputs which are used for the steady state error analysis that we can discuss now these are actually the test waveform to evaluate the steady state error of the position control system here we have this uh, step input then we have the ramp input and then we have the parabola input now uh, in order to explain that how these test signals are used let us assume a position control system now let us take the case of a position control system that is position control system now in the position control system the output position follows the input commanded position that is output position follows the input commanded position output position controls the input uh, that is uh, uh, follows the input commanded position now in this case you will see that this step input this step input represents the constant position and thus are useful for determining 
द एबिलिटी ऑफ द कंट्रोल सिस्टम टू पोजिशन इट सेल्फ विद रिस्पेक्ट टू स्टेशनरी टारगेट सो द स्टेप इनपुट फर्स्ट वन इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द कॉन्स्टेंट पोजिशन and it determined the ability ability of the control system to position itself with respect to the stationary target uh the example is the satellite in the geostationary orbit so the example of this is satellite in the geostationary orbit and antenna position control is an example of the system that can be tested for accuracy using the step input so the example of this step input is satellite in the geo stationary orbit so example of this is the antenna position control that is satellite is in geo stationary orbit and antenna position control is an example of the system that can be tested for accuracy using step input now second is the ramp input ramp input actually it represents a constant velocity input to a position control system by their linearly increasing amplitude that is its amplitude is increasing linearly these waveforms can be used to test a system's ability to follow a linearly increasing input that is to track a constant velocity target so these waveforms as i said can be used to test the system's ability to follow the linearly increasing input that is system's ability to follow the linearly increasing input or to track a constant velocity target okay for example a position control system as here second a position control system that tracks the satellite that moves across the sky at a constant angular velocity would be tested with the ramp input to evaluate the steady state error that is it can be uh, tested with the ramp input to it can be tested with the ramp input to evaluate the steady state error between the satellite's angular position and that of the control system that is we have to find the steady state error between the satellite's angular position what is the angular position of the satellite and the that of the control system for that we are using this uh, that is ramp input now third one is the parabola input parabola input whose second derivative is constant in case of the parabola input you will see that the second derivative of the parabola input is constant okay it actually represents a constant acceleration it represents the constant acceleration input to the position control system and can be used to represent the accelerating targets such as the missiles accelerating targets such as this missile to determine the steady state error performance okay so for that we are using the parabola the input whose error, whose second derivative is constant that is it has the constant acceleration 
and used to represent the accelerating target and the accelerating target in this case is accelerating missile okay to determine the steady state and the performance now in this case um, we are only concerned with the difference between the input and output of a feedback control system after the steady state has been reached that is we will discuss here the stable systems where the natural response approaches zero as t tends to infinite okay however the unstable systems represents the loss of the control and are not acceptable and are not discussed here that is it represents the loss of the control and are not discussed here and the expression if we derive the expression for the stable system and however if we use that expression for the unstable system then the erroneously uh, then some error would be there in that so we must check the system for the stability we must check the system first for the stability that is before going for this steady state error we must check the system for the stability okay while performing this steady state error analysis and design okay so before going to that we must know that the system is stable or not and in this uh, lecture we assume that all the systems in the problems that are given are stable okay so this is for the stable system only now uh, let us evaluate the steady state errors now in the figure a a step input and two possible outputs are shown the input is there two possible outputs that is output 1 and output 2 okay a similar example is shown in the figure b where the ramp input is compared with output when uh, one that is here ramp input is there then output one is there then output two is there and here one more output is output three which has the finite steady state error as measured vertically between the input and output two after the transient has died out so in the figure 1 uh, the output 1 has the zero steady state error and output 2 has the finite steady state error also similar is the case with this with ramp input now for ramp and input where is there is another possibility for the output 3 if the output slope is different from that of the input then output 3 results here the steady state error is infinite as measured vertically between the input and the output 3 after the transient had died out and as in t approaches infinite now Uh, since the error is actually the difference between the input and the output of the system that is let us suppose that input is rs and the output is cs input is rs and output is cs so it is the difference between the input and the output of the system and we assume a closed loop transfer function that is ts we assume a closed loop transfer function ts 
and form the error es by taking the difference between the input rs and output cs that is we assume a closed loop transfer function ts and form the error es by taking the difference between the input and the output as shown in this figure here we are actually interested in the steady state or the final value of the et that is error we want the steady state or the final value of the et it is the general representation in this case okay and al also we have read earlier this is the representation for the unity feedback system that we have studied earlier that is in the unity feedback system we have the rs as the input and cs as the output and this is the transfer function so it is represented in this way also in this uh, chapter we will study uh, and write the expressions for the steady state error for the unity feedback system and then we can easily uh, use the results and expand it to non unity feedback systems also now we will discuss the sources of the steady state error there is many steady state errors in the control system arise from the non linear sources that we have discussed like uh, backlash in the gears or the motor that will not move unless the input voltage exceeds the threshold also non linear behavior as a source of steady state error although uh, uh, we study here the errors uh, uh, that arise from the configuration of the system itself and the type of the applied input now let us uh, uh, take an example uh, this one a where rs in this case as you already know that rs is the input and cs is the output and error is basically the difference between the input and the output that is es in this case is equals to cs minus rs okay it is the error now let us consider that we have the step input 1 by s okay in the steady state if the ct equals to in the steady state in the time domain we can write it as that is et is equals to uh, that is uh, rs minus cs it is uh, to modify it now we will see if we consider the step input and if ct is equal to rt that is ct is equal to rt then this et error will be equal to zero but with the gain k that we have the gain k in between the error cannot be zero for this with the gain k this error cannot be zero if ct is to be finite and non zero for ct to be finite and non zero this error cannot be zero so from this configuration itself we can see that with the pure gain k in the forward path an error must exist okay so the error must be there so let us suppose that this c steady state is the steady state value of the output e steady state is the steady state value of the error then from this block between es and cs these there is a block k so we get c divided by e equals to k so our c steady state equals to k into e steady state or error steady state is equal to 1 by k c steady state so larger the, the with the value of the k the smaller with the value of this e steady state if k increases the value of the e steady state will decrease and would have to yield a 
similar value as C steady state. So we draw from this we draw the conclusion that with the pure gain K in the forward path there is always be a steady state error for the step input and this steady state error diminish as the value of this k increases now if in the uh, previous case it was k now let us suppose that we have used the integrated here integrator here that is k by integrate is represented by k divided by s previously it was k there will be zero error in the steady state for the step input that is for the step input of 1 by s the e steady state error would be zero in this case the reasoning is that that as ct increases as the value of ct increases et will decrease et will decrease rt in this case is the desired output and ct is the output as the value of ct increases the error will decrease this decrease will continue until there is the zero error until the error is zero okay but there will still be the value of ct since the integrator can have the constant output without an input so in case of the integrator we have the two outputs some integration and then constant and if still if this steady state error is zero but still there is the value of this constant c since the integrator has a constant output without any input the example can be taken as the of the motor okay now in case of a motor this motor can be represented simply by an integrator this motor can be represented simply by an integrator that is let us suppose that one by s a voltage applied to the motor will cause the rotation if we apply the voltage to the motor then it will cause the rotation okay when the applied voltage is removed let us suppose that this voltage is removed the motor will stop motor stops and remains at the present output position okay it means that this when the voltage is removed this does not this motor will not move to its initial position that is motor does not move to its initial position when the voltage is removed and but remain at its present output position so when the applied voltage is removed the motor will stop and remain at the present output position and it does not return to the initial position so we have the angular displacement that is we have the angular displacement output we have the angular displacement output without an input to the motor okay so system 
विच यूज इज द मोटर इन द फॉरवर्ड पाथ कैन हैव द जीरो स्टडी स्टेट एरर फॉर द स्टेप इनपुट इट मीन्स सिस्टम हैविंग द इंटीग्रेटर इन द फॉरवर्ड पाथ हैज द जीरो स्टडी स्टेट एरर फॉर द स्टेप इनपुट सो वी हैव एग्जामिन टू केसेज क्वालिटेटिवली इट शो हाउ द सिस्टम कैन बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू एग्जिबिट वेरियस स्टडी स्टेट एरर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सिस्टम configuration then the next lecture we can discuss about the steady state error for the unity feedback system thank you very much for this lecture